Happy New Year, everyone! This year, 2022, a revolution is gonna happen in astronomy. What <laughs> this revolution is NASA's new space infrared telescope, James Webb Space Telescope. This is our famous. Let's start with a little bit of history. In 1990, Hubble Space Telescope was launched and it revolutionized astronomy. Co let's compare the picture taken with a ground-based telescope on the left side with a picture of the same object taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. And you can see, you see that Hubble's picture is much, much sharper and you can see much more detail. The above picture is a galaxy. You can see the detail of galaxy structures. And the bottom picture is, this is a Neptune. And you see the atmospheric variance of the Neptune in the bottom picture, which you cannot see from the ground. So Hubble revolutionized our view of the universe. This was possible because Hubble is a space telescope. Hubble's images are sharp. For ground-based telescopes, the light came from the universe. It needs to go through the atmosphere. And then because our Earth's atmosphere have turbulences and then it's, you know, blur the picture of astronomical object. But Hubble Space Telescope is in space, so there's no atmospheric disturbance, so it can take sharper images. NASA's next space telescope, James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is also a space telescope, so it can take sharp image. But in addition, it's much bigger, three times bigger than Hubble. It's huge. The size of this telescope is three stories building, and the size of the sun shield is about the size of the tennis court. Let's compare the size with the Hubble. The Hubble's meter was 2.4 meter in diameter. The JWST is 6.5 meter, almost three times bigger than Hubble. In terms of area, area is proportional to the radius squared. So it's 6.2 times more correcting area than Hubble. In astronomy, the size of the mirror matters. There are two points in here. If the mirror is bigger, you can correct more light so you can see fainter objects. And also, importantly, resolution of the telescope is proportional to the diameter of the mirror. So if the mirror is bigger, you can see more details of the galaxies and records. Because the JWST's mirror is almost three times bigger than Hubble's mirror, JWST's resolution is almost three times bigger than Hubble. i show you an example. So the above picture is a picture of a galaxy taken with Hubble Space Telescope. It's already sharp enough. It's almost 10 times sharper than a picture taken with a ground-based telescope. But compared to that, the bottom panel shows the simulated picture of the same galaxy taken by JWST. And you can see much more details inside the spiral galaxy that Hubble cannot even see. And in addition, you might notice there are a lot of fainter galaxies that Hubble didn't see appear in a JWST image. This is the power of the bigger mirror. Well, JWST hasn't started the observation, so this JWST is a simulation of what the JWST picture looks like. It's a simulation, but it will be coming in half a year from now. To be fair, uh, a comparison with Hubble and then James Webb is not a fair comparison because James Webb is an infrared telescope. Hubble is more focused on the visible light. James Webb is focused on infrared light tell you the reason later. So the fair comparison with NASA's previous infrared telescope, which is Space, Spitzer Space Telescope. Spitzer was a very good telescope, also changed our view of the infrared universe, but it was only 85 centimeter in diameter because, you know, creating a big infrared telescope is difficult. As an infrared telescope, it's a fair comparison to compare James Webb with Spitzer. Then results look like this. This is again JWST image simulations. Compared to Spitzer image on the left side, JWST image on the right side is much, much sharper, isn't it? And then you see many, many 
faint, tiny galaxies that you don't see in the Spitzer image. This is how JWST is going to revolutionize astronomy in this year. Again, JWST image is a simulation image. In half a year, JWST is going to take actual picture like this. In terms of sensitivity, if you compare the sensitivity with the Spitzer, it depends on the wavelengths, but in some wavelengths, JWST sensitivity is 10 or several dozens times better than Spitzer. So that means JWST can observe 10 times fainter object than Spitzer. And that's 10 times fainter, that's a revolution. Okay, with this kind of big telescope, what JWST can do? There are many things JWST can do, but I show you two examples here. One, JWST can see the first galaxies and black holes. This is related to why JWST is an infrared telescope, because our universe is expanding. So, more distant objects are moving away from us faster. And then if it's moving away from us faster, its light is red shifted, moves, the wavelength moves to the redder. Then those light from first galaxies and black holes are already red shifted into infrared. So we need infrared telescope to see first galaxies and black holes. In other words, no matter how big Hubble Space Telescope is, Hubble Sp Space Telescope cannot detect these galaxies because it's an optical telescope. We need infrared telescope. That's why JWST is an infrared telescope. And then that's, you know, that's one of the ultimate goal for us to observe first galaxies in the universe. Second sci science breakthrough comes from the exoplanets. Nowadays, thousands of extrasolar planets have been found. These are planets going around other stars other than Sun. And then we, we now know that many stars have planets. The next question for, for, for astronomers is that, is there any life in those planets? There are some planets are uh, found to be Earth-like, after temperature, size. Are there any life in these Earth-like planets? JWST can answer this question by revealing the atmospheric composition of these extrasolar planets. If there's an oxygen or carbon dioxide or water in the atmosphere of these extrasolar planets, there's more chance that there's, there may be a life on these planets. JWST can answer this question. The technique is also interesting. The atmosphere of extrasolar planets is still faint and difficult to detect because these are planets, not star. It's not shining by itself. So we use a technique, something called transit spectroscopy. Atmosphere of these exoplanets are very faint, but when this planet comes in front of the star, this star's light is going to go through the atmosphere of the planet. And if there's an oxygen or carbon dioxide or, or hydrogen or water in this atmosphere, there will be a characteristic absorption sign in the spectra of this background star. That's how we can investigate atmospheric composition of extrasolar planets. And this is what JWST can do. We might find a planet with water, oxygen, and then carbon dioxide. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? Okay, then with such a big telescope with superb sensitivity, what is the cost of the JWST? Can you guess how much is a JWST? As a reference, Hubble Space Telescope, launched in 1990, cost 1.5 billion USD. That's already awfully expensive because the ground-based Subaru Telescope, that's 8-minute telescope, costed about 0.4 billion. So that's four times more expensive than Subaru Telescope. How about JWST? Guess how much it is. The answer is 10 billion US dollars. 10 billion US dollars. Can you imagine 10 billion US dollars? 
I cannot imagine how、um, how much is ten million dollars. If you add all the major league baseball players' salary, that's about three billion. So with ten billion, you can hire all the major league baseball players for three years. Or F twenty two fighter jet. One of them is about point two billion U.S. dollars. So you can buy F twenty two fighter jet fifty of them. That's how expensive JWST is. So at the time of the launch, I was a little bit worried because if launch failed or something failed on its journey to the destination, then this ten billion U.S. dollar is just gone. So I was very worried, but on Christmas Day last year, December twenty-five, twenty twenty-one, the launch was successful, for extremely successful. It was launched from French Guinea because French Guinea is closer to the the equator than Florida. So, if your if the launch was closer to the equator, you can use Earth's rotation to push the rocket a little bit, so that saves some fuel. This launch by European Ariane Five rocket was very, very accurate and successful. It went into precise orbit it wanted, so it saved some fuel of JWST. The JWST had some extra fuel in case the launch was not so accurate. It, ha- it has to use the fuel to adjust the orbit, but JWST didn't have to use this fuel, so it, it can use this fuel for scientific observation. And then this made the lifetime of JWST longer than expected, more than 10 years. That's wonderful news because it's 10 billion US dollar telescope. We want to use it as long as possible, right? But still, there are challenges I have because JWST is so big, it cannot fit into the rocket as it is. So it was folded like in a Japanese origami style. Into the rocket, so it has to deploy these structures in the space. This is again very, very scary to me because if one of these deploying sequence fails, then this ten billion dollar telescope is gone. At the beginning, they it opened the solar panel that was successful because solar panel is important. You need to get the electricity from the sun, solar panel, and next it opened the, this so-called Sun shield. These are thin layers of refractive materials, and then there's a fi- there are five layers. Each one of them is thinner than the hair of human, and the size, as I said, is like a tennis court. This is very important because infrared telescope need to be cooled down, cooled down to minus 220 degrees Celsius or 50 Kelvin. And to cool down, it needs to block the sunlight and then reflect it back. So it's very important to have this sun shield. But this opening sun shield was also successful. And then right now, yesterday or the day before, they deployed a secondary mirror. Secondary mirror was behind the telescope, and it pushed it into the in front of the primary mirror of the telescope. So the light coming to the telescope is reflected by the main mirror, goes in the secondary mirror, and secondary mirror. Reflects the light, and it going goes into the instrument, and this was successful. The only thing remaining to deploy is the main mirror. Main mirror is folded into three, and it has to open like this origami. That's going to happen today or tomorrow. So right now, it's about in the midpoint to L2. Its final destination is L2, second Lagrangian point. This point is very convenient because gravity. Is in equilibrium, so the telescope can stay at L2 without using fuel. If it's closer to the the Earth or the Sun, then it needs to use fuel to stay at the same place to to balance the gravity of the Sun or the Earth. But then at L2, it doesn't need to use a fuel because it's a balanced point already. Then this NASA and this point L2 point is 1.5 million kilometer from the Earth. Or four times the distance of the moon. It's very far away from the Earth. This is also good for infrared telescope because, as I said, infrared telescope need to be 
kept cool at minus 220 Celsius, so it won't be away from the sun or the earth to you know, avoid the strong radiation to heat up the telescope. It's better to be farther away. But this also puts the telescope you know, in danger too. In contrast, Hubble Space Telescope was orbiting the Earth like a satellite. That's why sometimes Space Shuttle went to Hubble Space Telescope to fix this problem or to install a new instrument. Well, these kind of things we cannot do it for JWST because JWST is 1.5 million kilometers away. So again, this scares me if something is not working then we cannot go there to fix the telescope so everything must happen in a perfect way then nasa has this website called where is web and then now right now it's uh, in about the middle point to the l2 so in about two weeks from now or one month from the launch it reaches l2 and after launching the l2 it's gonna adjust the focus of the mirror and there are a lot of things to do and about half a year from the launch, it will start scientific observations, which we are looking forward to very, very much. In collaboration with my collaborators, I also have our program in a JWST schedule to observe you know, black holes and galaxies in very distant universe. So we are waiting for JWST data. Every picture JWST is going to take is going to be a revolution. Because of the size of the telescope, it has galaxies and black holes we've never seen in every picture. So writing paper with ZFS is actually each easy because every paper you have unseen object that's a new discovery. We are so much looking forward to the JWS ST data. And then that's going to happen in this year 2022. That's why I say There'll be a revolution in astronomy this year. Let's look forward to that. Okay, I stop here today. If you like the video, please like it and then please subscribe to my channel. And then thank you for watching and then see you next time. Ah, uh, by the way, the name of the JWST, James Webb, is taken from the second head of NASA, Dr. James Webb. Okay, bye bye.